used to a sequence with only one element, which by definition is sorted already, then you're done. Okay, that's the sorting error. You can extend this to selection. So selection is about finding the case largest element. case largest element. Of course you can do this by sorting. You sort your sequence and you go to the case position that gives you the case largest element. But that will take a long in time. And you can do better than that. Okay? Can anyone help me with this? I want to find the case element. How do you do that? What's the time complexity of doing that? Sorting is a baseline solution, right? It takes a lot of in time to give you the case element. But you can do better than that. Linear, yeah. Huh? Linear. Yeah. Linear, yes. How do you do it? The medium. Medium. Yeah. Like a can you be more specific? Huh? It's like a dividing monetary algorithm, but I can't remember how it goes, but I can't remember how it goes. Okay, uh, I'll give you some hint. It's closely related to quick sort. Quick select. Quick select. Yeah. And how does it work? Yeah. Basically just with the uh, you, uh, you basically just have to move an element to its right spot so you do the partition. Uh, okay, let me draw the picture for quick sort, then you know what I'm talking about. So this is a unique symbol. Choose the paper. Some of them goes here, some of them goes here. So I have two signals. Right? If you were to do quick sort, what happens now? Find another paper here, find another paper, you, you recurse, right? But if your goal is to do this, what's the observation? Throw away one sequence, man. Why do you look at both sequences? You know the size of this. If the size of this is greater than k, you know k, the case element must be here. If the size of this is less than k, the case element must be here. In either case, you only need to look at one sequence uh, instead of looking at both sequences. And what's the complexity of this? Instead of instead of that. And there are about log n of them as well here. But this, if you add up this, this roughly, this is what? Linear, right? Why? We saw this before, right? In V plus 3, if the number of leaf level pages is n, what's the number of pages above? The only thing is now this, you can imagine this. So I argued before that this sequence, when you add it up, is linear to n, right? So this must be uh, linear to n as well. Of course, uh, this is a quick, quick select. Uh, just like quick sort, it's a randomized algorithm, meaning that you have to be lucky in selecting this dot. In the extreme case, you are not so lucky. What happens if you end up here? Then everyone goes to the same sequence. And you don't get this nice reduction by a factor of two. In fact, in the worst case, you don't get any reduction at all. So you wonder, then isn't the, the case, the worst case is what? It's almost as well, because you, you, you never reduce this. Well, the argument is, since it's a randomized process, right? You are selecting this paper every single time <coughs> using a truly uh, random process, right? You have to be like so unlucky to do this all the time. I mean, in fact, if you find yourself like selecting people always to the one end of your sequence for five, six times in a row, stop doing it, go by lottery and you might win a million bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, what's the probability for this to happen? Think about it. 
Right? What's the probability you select the last element in the sequence, the smallest or the largest element in the sequence? Well, the first time you do it is 1 over n. What's the, what's the probability you do this again? 1 over n, n times 1 over n. n squared. 1 over n squared. If n is a million, the chance for you to, to do it twice is 1 over 10 to the power 12. 1 over 10 to the power 12. That's the probability for you to, select, to be so unlucky to choose the bad pivot twice in a row. You know, if you, and I'm telling you, you have done this for five, six times. Imagine what that probability is. That beats any odds you will have against winning a million bucks. Seriously. Yeah? So that quick sort and quick select. Unfortunately, this breaks when you try to scale this to large data, to what we call big data. Okay. Why? The reason is, these algorithms assume data fit in memory. Okay? It charges no cost at comparing two items. The only cost I'm charging here is the comparison operation itself, which takes hopefully one CPU instruction to do it. Okay? But in reality, if your data doesn't fit in memory, when you compare one item against another item, what happens? Let's take a closer look at running this algorithm as it is. If you run this algorithm as it is, what happens? You're gonna check this goes in here, check goes here, check goes here, check goes here. Do you see the problem? You're, you know, you can do, maybe you can read them in blocks, that's okay. But when you write them to two sequences, you're, you're paying one I.O., almost one I.O. per element. So I.O. wise, this is super expensive. You follow me? In the external memory model we're talking about. So this algorithm does not work. This algorithm do not work in external memory, okay? It's super slow. So how do you do this? For example, if your laptop has 16 gigabytes of RAM, how do you sort uh, a data set that's 100 gigabytes? In fact, let me take to the extreme case. Let's assume your laptop has only 4 megabytes of RAM, not even 4 gigabytes, 4 megabytes of RAM. How do you sort a terabyte of data? Suppose you have one terabyte disk. Is it even possible to do this? That's what we're going to talk about today. I don't know why the signal is not. Okay. So I motivate this problem, uh, blah, 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 all this. Okay. So now, you know, let's look at the algorithm directly. So I'm going to present this extreme case. Right? I have one terabyte of data. I don't even have four megabytes of memory. I, in fact, I have only three pages in my main memory. Each page is, let's say, uh, of page size four kilobytes or eight kilobytes, doesn't matter. So let's, let's say I have four kilobytes, four kilobytes page, so my memory size is 12 kilobytes. So I only have 12 kilobytes of memory. Okay, 12 kilobytes of memory. Now, how do you do sorting? Uh, in this extreme case. Okay, here's, uh, here is what you do. Okay. Step number one, phase one, what we call phase one, that's easy. So 
remember I have three pages in my memory, right? Phase one is very simple. This is my this is these are pages on disk. Imagine this is on um, So phase one is very simple. What I do is I read the first page in, sort it, and write it back to disk. I can sort using whatever sorting algorithm I, I would like to use. But, but this time, it is a mid-number sorting problem. You can use quick sort, you can, you know, if you don't even know what you're doing, you can even use bubble sort. <laughs> okay? If you're so disoriented, you know, you use bubble sort, that's okay. Because modern is gonna be on the I/O anyway. A one page bubble sort, quick sort, public different kind of enemy. But do use quick sort. Now, I'm ready to disk. So I'm gonna. Of course, you are not writing to a different disk. This is the same disk. I'm just kind of copying it over. Okay, it's the same disk. It's not like you're writing to a second, uh, second different disk. You're writing back to the same disk. So what's the difference between this and this? Well, data within this page are more are now sorted. After this step, data within a page are sorted. You follow me? So I do this, you know, one by one. I end up with the same number of pages, but now. Uh, they are they are sorted. Now they are sorted. Suppose I have n pages here. I will have n pages here. I'm done. That's phase one. What is the I/O cost of phase one? Well, for example, two n. Right? You read each page once. You write each page once. You follow me? Yes. Oh, no. Okay. Simple. Now, now let's proceed to uh, phase two. I'm gonna reuse my picture here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to phase number two. But now my picture looks like this. I know these pages are sorted within a given page. Now I'm gonna organize my three min number pages like this. By the way, this is you put that number four. Right? After you finish week three, you're gonna implement this. <laughs> Not necessarily with three min number pages, with more number pages, of course. But we need to understand this basic setup first. Okay? Now what do you do? I'm gonna organize my three min number pages like this. I have one what I call output buffer. And I will have two, what I call, two input buffers. And each input buffer is one page. It's just one page. So what I'm going to do is I load the first page from here to the first input buffer, and second page here to the second input buffer. Is that clear? Now the picture looks like this. And I'm going to introduce two cursors now. Okay, now you see how this goes, right? Hold on. You maintain two cursors, and you start moving these cursors according to the values you see. You push the smaller of the two to the open buffer. Let's say that's my setup. So I'm going to have two, I'm going to have five. Then after that, what I have? I have seven. And by now, my output buffer is filled. What do I do? Right into the disk. Yes. Do this. 
after I write it to the disk, this becomes effectively empty again. So call this a dirty page. Kick it off. And what do you do? Continue. No, just 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 you know, you just override it. Just override it. Just just treat the whatever bytes over there. Once you have written this alpha buffer to the disk, just view this as a collection of junk bytes. You can start overriding that one. I'm just wondering if it's probably like this uh, sort got like interrupted somehow. Um, so like for instance, so those input buffers that are loading, um, are those disks are, are those pages going to be like overridden or replaced? Well, I call them output buffer and input buffer, but don't confuse this with the database buffer. Right. The buffer is here is just a placeholder. Think about this as a placeholder. That's all. Don't confuse this with the buffer in uh, the in terms of a database buffer. They are not database buffers. They are just a page in the memory. That's all. Nothing else. And I, whenever it's, I, I I I reach the end of the page size, write it to disk, I can start overwriting them again. That's it, very simple. So but this sort can't be interrupted, can it? What do you mean can be interrupted? Like halfway through the sort, I can't just look at it, it's like work on Well, as you said. that's the thing. Don't, don't think about this as data buffer. This is totally separate from your database buffer. Your database buffer operates uh, independently from this. This has nothing to do with your database buffer. OK? It's just three placeholder in the memory, that's all. So there's no replacement on all the stuff we talk about buffer uh, that's gonna happen here. All right. Now I feel like this, and I know that by the time I I, I reach the end of the upper buffer page for the second time, I will have used up all my elements from the two input buffers. Why? Because I have two pages of data from the input. I reach the upper buffer, uh, I scan through the upper buffer twice. By that time, I must have uh, equal amount of data from the input and output. I'm done with these two input buffers. Okay? And now, let's look at the output. What, what is the property in the output? Well, now they're sorted like that. And I call this okay. run of two sorted pages. Is that clear? And now what I can do, I can throw away the content here. And do what? For what? For what? For the next two pages. And then by the end of that, what do I get? You know, I don't even have to look at the data unit. I know I will have another one of two sorted pages. OK? You can do this. Let's assume for now. You know, if you know there are two cases, right? Right? Okay. There are two cases. N well, n is multiple two, or n is not multiple two. You follow me? In the first case, what happens? I know that my last one. will have two pages of data as well. In the second case, what happens? I know my second last one has two pages, and my last one has only a one page. OK? But doesn't matter how many rounds I will have 
by the end of this phase. Roughly, the ceiling of floor of this. May I ask somebody? Sitting on the floor of this. How many rounds do we have by the end of this phase? Take a guess, you have 50% chance of winning, right? <laughs> Your odds is pretty good, I think. Huh? I'm asking you sitting on floor, right? Just tell me sitting on floor, that's all. That's all you have to do. Sitting. Uh, let me ask somebody else. Me? Same. Okay. Ceiling is the right answer. Okay. Why? If it's an even number, you have exactly n divided by 2 number of rounds. So ceiling of floor doesn't matter. If you have all number of uh, num uh, pages, you will have n minus 1 divided by 2 plus 1. So that's, that's the number of rounds we have. Okay? Now, the interesting part is what's, what is the total number of IOs you do in this phase? What are the total number of IOs you spend in this phase? We know. Uh, N. N? IOs? Why? Why? Um, because you have to load all the um, You have to load all of them in, okay? Yeah. And, and plus the... Plus the what? Output. Yes, plus output. What's the cost of output? Uh, it's the, the, the ceiling of the turn divided by two. Huh? So you're saying this? That's 
of my view. And my memory stays the same. This is where it is a little bit tricky, right? I think most of you, if not all, can understand phase two, right? Because it's one page, one page, each are sorted. I load this in, I load this in, merge that, dump to the output. I have two input buffer, one for each input page, I'm good. But now each one has two pages. How do you do that? Well, the trick is. I hope by, by drawing these two lines, you already know how to do this. Okay? You should be able to. If you are unable to figure out you know, what's going on by the time I draw these two lines, that means you need some more work. Okay? Not only in David's club, but more work towards you uh, CS degree. Okay? Why drawing these two lines will help me? Like, the reason is, by the time I load this page here, this page here, I, have, I still have this picture. They are sorted within each page. If you are sorted within two pages in a row, this page must be sorted within itself. So I can still do the same thing of moving the cursors. At some point, I may reach a state like this. My output buffer is filled. Whenever that happens, what do I do? Well, dump it to the output. Empty this, continue, and then at some later stage, I will reach a state something like this, and this is fill up again. Not necessary fill up, right? Maybe I'm halfway, right? Then you know, it's not necessary, right? I still have some space, but I I I run out of data. Here is a critical point. What do you do at this point? What do you do from what do you do at this point? Okay? Load the next page from the same row. Load, you okay. can say this three times, right? Load the same load the next page from the same row. Like this phrase becomes really popular literally in some Chinese social media website. Important things, say it three times. Load the same, the load the next page from the same ground. Load the next page from the same ground. Okay. Load the next <coughs> page from the same ground. That's my third question, right? Okay. Why this works? The reason is, keep in mind these two pages are sorted, and this cursor basically tells you where you are. Not only in the current page, but in the current run. That's the view you should have. You view this cursor as where you are in the current run. Once you load the next page in to the input buffer, you reset the cursor back to the front. Now you can proceed. So at some point, It may look like this, this is, this is filled, you dump this, it's okay. But when this is filled up, what do you do? Well, load the next page from the same prompt and reset the cursor to the beginning. And you, you continue. And very easy to show that by the end of doing all of this, by the end, now when both cursors reach the end of the corresponding input buffers, what do you have? You guarantee to have four pages of data on disk and, and they are sorted. Now, this is what I call Now, after this, what do you do? Well, continue, right? Recurse. 
but don't load this page here, rather load, load the first page of the next one here and then the first page of the next one here. And continue. Sorry, will it matter in the long run if you actually pick the next page in this or if you just pick like some other run of two? It doesn't matter, you don't have to proceed in sequence in terms of the rounds, but as long as you respect the boundaries of the rounds. It doesn't matter. But it's probably more efficient to do this because hopefully you, you can still do you can still have some locality on this when you jump from here to here, than jump into some other random rounds. But it doesn't really matter which one you do it first. Um, so when did you break that locality when you go when the disk is rotating? Yes, this is something we will talk about later on as well. So keep this question in mind. We will come back to this. All right. The only exception that might happen is when you reach the end of the thing when let's say n is off. When n is off, what might happen? Well, the last two rounds, one will have two pages, and the other will have what? Only one page. You follow me? And what do you do in that case? Well, it's fine. The first page of the first round here, the first page of the second round here, is just that when the cursor moves to the end of the page, input buffer for the second round, you do not need to load the next page because there's no next page for the next, for this round. And when you do that, what happens is the last one in this space will have potentially three pages instead of four pages. Another possible scenario is what? The last one may have Two pages. If you have odd number of rounds, or the last round has only one page. If you have odd number of rounds and odd number of pages, that's all the possible combinations. If you follow me? But that's that. The last one is either. So the last one is one of those four cases. It doesn't matter. It's a it's a it's a minority. Minority. Roughly speaking, we have this many sort of pages. How many rounds we have? Are you logging in? No. You have n divided by two sitting number of rounds to begin with. <laughs> How many rounds you are merging in each step? You are merging exactly two rounds in each step. So it's this weird number here, but makes total sense. Okay. So does it ever call by like this space merge sort or anything? Because it seems like they're really similar. Uh, we are talking about this space back more so. So what was the other name? I think I saw on the slide two-way sorting or something. Uh, name them, like, whatever. You can call it whatever. I don't really care. As long as you understand that. The official name is X to no more sort. X to no more sort. Okay. All right. Roughly, you can claim this is You can even ignore the settings right, to make it like simple Roughly Okay, now what? Now I hope all of you see how this goes, right? Okay, you just Copy these guys, like redo the you know redo the same step for the next phase, but now still merging two rounds at a time, but each round will have four pages, and you will merge them into a round of eight pages. 
then recurse and merge them to a round of 16 pages, a round of 32 pages, a round of 64 pages, a round of 128 pages, until a round of n pages, and you're done. How many phases it will take for you to, to reach that? Not the log n computation, because why? Because each time you reduce the number of rounds by a factor of two. Your goal is to have only one round left, which is n pages. Each time reduced by two, start with n rounds. How many phases it take? Well, log n phases. Plus phase number one, where you didn't reduce the number of rounds. You can argue, I start with n pages, I can argue that they are n rounds, but with unsorted pages. Phase one gives you n rounds of one page each, but sorted. Then from there, each step you do, you reduce the number round by a factor of two. So the total number of phase you are doing is what? Roughly this. And what's the I.O. cost in each phase? Well, even in this case, when you merge two rounds of two pages each, produce a round of four pages, you read n pages in, write n pages back to the disk. So the total I.O. cost for that phase is still 2n. So each phase, the I.O. cost is 2n. So the total I.O. cost is what? And in big O notation, you may wonder, isn't this the same as quicksort? What do we achieve by doing this? Well, this is the n log n I.O.s. Not n log n CPUs. If you use quick sort, your IO cost is way more than this. Would it be beneficial to have more to do with the buffers? That's exactly what I'm going to talk about next. Okay. You don't have two buffers, right? You have what? I have 16 gigabytes. No, this one, no. This one has maybe 8 or 12 gigabytes. My desktop has maybe, I don't know, 32 or 64 gigabytes. Something like that. And that's translated to, I don't know how many pages you have. Okay, so now let's look at... So that's an illustration of this. I'm going to skip. Okay. Analysis and all that stuff I showed you already. And then back to Daniel's question, which is what we're going to talk about next. Now, what we're going to do is erase all of this, okay? But still, with this algorithm, you see, you know, I convinced you even with 4 megabytes of RAM, you can sort a terabyte of data, or 2 terabytes, or even whatever terabytes of data you can do it. You follow me? And it's not too bad. And log in, it's often a good number to, to see. Right? In computer science, the log is pretty good. Because in any computer science problem, your lower bound is what? Your lower bound is n. Why? You, look, you have to look at the input at least once, man. If you don't look at your input, how can you be sure you're right? So you have to pay at least linear cost. And then I tell you, you pay linear cost times log n, which is pretty good, right? However, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. You know, if you if you ask federal government, then I'll get asked in square scale. If you have Google, then I'll get it's bad. That's the difference. The difference is one is spending the other's money, one is spending its own money. And that's the difference. If you buy me lunch, 20 bucks is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's try to cut on the cost furthermore. Uh, let's try, try to cut on the cost for, uh, furthermore. So I, I will have more than two uh, number of pages. So I'm going to use a number to denote that. Let's say I'm going to have D pages. Okay. So I'm going to have B 
over. Okay, my disk is still the same. I have like 10 pages on disk. <coughs> now my phase one will be similar to what we have done in the base case. But instead of reading just one page at a time, because reading one page at a time and sort it obviously is a waste of your resources. You have B pages, right? So a very natural extension is to do what? Well, read B pages and sort it. So you read B pages, occupy all of them, use an in-place sorting algorithm to sort them and dump to the disk. And what do you have on disk? By end of this phase, you have a round of you have a round of B sorted pages. You read n pages in, sort them using quick sort what happened, in place sorting algorithm, down to disk. You follow me? And by the end of this phase, what do you have? By the end of this phase, it roughly has, not roughly, exactly you have, this many rounds. Most of them have B pages, except the last one will have less than or equal to B pages. Anywhere between one to B pages, depending on the value of n and n, 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 sorry, and b. <coughs> That's your phase one. You not clear? Now, what about phase two and three and four? Well, it's very similar to the base case, except that you can merge more than two rounds at a time. You can merge, in fact, you can merge B minus 1 rounds at a time. Why? Well, the reason is clear. Once I draw it, I will arrange these B pages like this, such that I have B minus 1 input buffer and 1 output buffer. On my disk, I will have these rounds of B solid pages. And this is the second round. And this is my, that's, that's the argument is my B minus, B minus one wrong. Each has B pages. What do I do? That's it. Okay. I load the first page from each run into the corresponding input buffer and then start moving the cursors. Whenever the cursor reaches the end of the input buffer, I load important things three times. Load the Next page from same run. Next page from same run. Next page from same run. You do the same thing. Okay. And you may, at some point, you may have exhausted all pages from this run, while still processing some page from some other run. That's okay. You just stop loading the next page from this run because there's no next page. Eventually, you will reach a state where. This cursor will all move to the end, and you have reached the end of each page. Uh, you have reached the end of each run. By that time, you are done with merging this B minus one runs. And what do you have in the output? What do you have in the output? You have a run of how many pages? You have a single run of B times B minus one pages, and then you recurse. Uh, so it's 
same thing that two buffer is within the taking into account the output buffer. In the first phase? Yeah. You can do that, but you know, just for the argument say I want to keep this as simple as possible. Uh, do we still just use one output buffer? Yes, we're still using one output buffer here. How do we know? <coughs> so when output buffer builds, excuse me. Yeah, go ahead. How do we know the the first page in the whole disk may not be empty yet? How do we know where to write the output? The first page in the disk is not empty yet. So how the first time the output buffer fills. The first time this is filled. Yeah. Okay. Where do you write it? Well, you write to the current run on disk if it's not completely done yet. But when this happens, when you have, when you know you are like this, you can add a special marker to the last page here to denote the end of the run, which means the next one will go to the start of the new run. Or you can simply count the number of pages because the number of pages in the run is fixed, except the last one. Except the last one. So I guess I didn't follow that. Let's say let's say the first run has the largest numbers out of, out of the entire set. For, for whatever reason, those ones all have the largest values. So I'm going to start. You mean first, by largest value? You mean the the numbers? The values inside the, values the pages. Uh, the largest. Okay, okay, sure. Yeah, sure. So you, you go through and you start moving your pointers across, and, and you're going to be popping stuff off of the other page. Yes. Off of the page. But, uh, but your output runs are, are still filled with input that needs to be processed. Right? So, let's say these are the largest. Only so far. Only for the first mm -hmm. run. Right? But when you hit the second page on the first batch, I still haven't processed that. I, I'm, I'm pulling stuff off the other runs. So let me let me show you this case, right? So Eric's argument is what if let's consider a string case where the first round has the largest value of, of all the rounds I'm trying to work. That's fine. They are sorted, right? So this is the smallest value from the first round. Let's say the smallest value is already a thousand and one and this is I don't know two thousand. And all these other runs are less than solid. Okay? What happens? Well, what happens is you can think about I'm effectively I'm merging these guys without touching this guy at all because this cursor will stay here, do nothing. It will stay here until when? Until you have merged all these pages. By that time, you disk has how many pages? B minus one times B minus one pages. Uh, sorry, B minus one. B minus uh, oh, B minus two times B pages. You merge. You have merged B minus two rounds of B pages each. Each round is of B pages. Remember, and we're merging effectively. We're merging B minus two rounds because the first round never get a single value to the output yet. But the nice thing about this algorithm is eventually you will be processed. By the time I reach the end of the buff output buffer for all this run and there are no more next page to load from these output buffers, you will start moving these cursors. Without but this is a simple case without need without the need. You simply push this sequentially to the output, fill, done, and then load the next page. That's okay because these are sorted. You are simply pushing them in the same order to the output. But all of this now will come behind all these pages. Right, but where do you write it to? It, it must you write to this, but it must not be squinched in this. You you write to the whatever you write to the, the last page you have written to the right after the last page you have written to the disk. So this is a whole new set of data, it's like I'm, I'm going to end up with a whole new set of copy. Okay, I see what you are, you are talking about. Think, make it simple, let's think about, let's think about you are doubling, you are using two times of disk space. Okay, then I'm, okay, then I'm. Okay, if you are, I, I see what you're saying. 
if you are talking about writing back to the same these pages, that's actually tricky. You're, that's what we call in place sorry. So I'm not talking about in place sorry. In place action sorry. Right? I'm not talking about this case. I'm talking about where I'm using two types of these spaces. Actually, you don't need two types of these spaces. All you need is one additional uh, set of pages that good enough to hold uh, your first round. Because then you can re reuse this first round all the time. All right. Now, this, by the end of this, I have B minus one times B pages, a single round of this. How many rounds I will have? Well, and remember, at the end of phase one, I have this many rounds. Now, I have how many rounds I have? I'm merging B minus one rounds at a time. However, the last merge operation may not have B minus one rounds. It may have one round, two round, or up to B minus one round. The last merge operation. So, again, I will have to take the setting of that. But to make my life easier, I simply you know, I can just argue this is roughly. Okay? And then I can recurse. In the next phase, what do I have? I will have each ROM has this many pages. And I will merge B minus one such ROM again to produce a ROM of this many pages. And my number of rounds will be reduced by another by another B minus one factor. You follow me? If you do the math, at the end of it, what do you have? I'm gonna write this sequence out, okay? You have n pages, one round, two. B pages in a round. This is the okay. How do I do this? Um, okay. I start with one page in a round, and then my number of rounds is n. That's when they are they are not even sorted. I go from here to B pages in a round, and this many rounds. Then go from here to to that. Then I go from here to. by a factor of b minus 1. So you keep dividing b minus 1 from this number. 
how many divisions you do to reduce this to one. So that's exactly the number of divisions you do to bring this back to one. Of course, the sitting of that. But Charlie is right because if roughly you bring all the notation, this is right. Just why? First of all, roughly as right? and this is essentially okay, which is just this. Let me finish now. Uh, what is the number of IOs in each round? Faces you have, we call them in. and in each phase, what is the IO cost? Well, same argument. You read each page once. You know, you don't. You, I, I guess you don't even say read each page once. Write each page once because that has, the page you are talking about are different from the input and output. In each phase, you read n page of data, you write n page of data, period. And so that's the total number of IOs. And compare this against, against what? Against when b equal to 2, right? The base case we did. What is the difference? Well, Five pages, B equal to five. 
108 pages in total. In page 0, what's the size of my each round and number of rounds? Here. You have, when you are here, you have to think and follow, right? Otherwise, why are you are here? So how many, uh, how many rounds do you have in, in, phase, in the first phase? And uh, number of rounds do you have? Just tell me uh, what's the size of each one. What about that? Pass zero. Pass zero is when you load the page, sort them down to disk. What's your name? Huh? Mingwei. Louder, louder. I cannot hear. Mingwei. Louder. Louder. I cannot hear you. Mingwei. Mingwei. Okay. What's the size of each round? One. Size of each round is one. Okay. How many rounds do you have? One hundred. We are not talking about the biscuit. I'm talking about this improved algorithm using B pages. B equal to five. Now. How many? Let me ask you one more time. How many uh, pages in a round? <coughs> let him answer. <laughs> yeah. So, so that one of my my think my thinking is you have to sort each page and they are uh, independent of each other. Read in B pages, sort them. That's what I said, right? You produce a round of B pages. When B equals 5, the size of each round is 5 pages. The, round, the size of each round is 5 pages. And how many rounds do you have for 108 pages? 22, right? 22 times 510, which is the first number larger than 108, so 22. Okay, so you have five pages in each one and 22 rounds after pass zero. But you, you have to sort, I mean, is this talking about after you sort of each page individually? No, you merge. This is the improved version, right? You read B pages and you sort them all together because all of them are in the number. You don't have to sort them one by one. You use quick sort to sort all of them. So you kind of move yeah. parts together. The answer is here. <laughs> Well, first, row. first row is like you haven't done anything, it's on disk. Oh, okay. This is, you haven't done anything, this is, the, this is like before the big map, right? It's like, you haven't done anything. Okay. What about pass one? What's the size of each one? And then we'll hit it. I'll give you another chance. What, what is the size of each one? How many pages in the round? Size of each one is five. No way. You, you, you know, you pass zero, you already have size of each one is five pages, right? In pass one, you start merging rounds. So the size must be bigger than five, right? What's the point of merging otherwise? Okay, me? Jason? What about Jason? How many? How many? Four? You have five pages in your round. How many rounds are you merging, by the way? Number of rounds. 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 Number of 20 pages in a round because you, know, you have 5 pages in a round and you have 5 buffer pages, 1 as output buffer, 4 as input buffer. So you are merging 4 rounds at a time. Each has 5 pages. That produces a single round of 20 pages. How many rounds do you have? 20 rounds. Okay, Guina, can you hear what she is saying? Okay, Laura. Uh, uh, four. Can you hear what she's saying? <laughs> Maybe she says four. Maybe she says four. Okay, you have a good year, I think. Louder, okay? 
How many rounds do you have? Four. Four. Four rounds. I'm not talking about how many rounds you are merging. I'm talking about how many rounds you end up with at the end of this pass, at the end of this phase. 22 divided by 5. 22 divided by 5? Four. 22 divided by 4, take the ceiling of that, which is 6, oh. 6 rounds. The first 5 rounds, each has 20 pages. The last one has 8 pages. Why is that? Because if you look at the, the path 0, you have 22 rounds, right? 21 of them have five pages, and the last one has only three pages. I mean, by the end of this lecture, or after some revision, this should become crystal clear to you. When I pull out this question, it should take you less than a second to, to figure out this number, right? So, 108 pages. At the, at the end of pass zero, you have five pages in a round. For most of the rounds, not for all the rounds, because the last one, so every five, you group every five, and you do that for 21 of them. You do that for 21 of them, the last one has. left. That's how you get 108 in total. Okay? And each you load in memory you sort them. And now in pass one what do you do? Huh? What do you do? You start merging them. Four of them go to a round. Imagine it has three and four here. And I'll give you a round of how many pages? 20 pages. 20 pages. And this is the first one. And you do that. Since you are running four rounds at a time, what happens is round 17, round 18, round 19, round 20, they will be merged into a round. So this will be they will be merged into this. And these two guys will be left behind merged into another round of only eight pages. And all of this are 20. And this is the first round, and this will be the fifth round, right? Because every four of them go to a round, right? So this will be the fifth one. This will be the sixth one. Oh, only eight pages. Now what do you do? Well, merge them again. Still, every four rounds go to a single round. So, one, two, three, four. They will go to a single round of how many pages? Eight, right? Each has 20. And then the fifth and sixth round will be merged into another round, which is the second round of how many pages? 28. Then one last phase, you are done. Okay. Now, examples. Now let's increase the values. Let's say I have a billion pages. A billion. Okay, a billion pages. But B is only 257. B is small, 257. That's like nothing, right? For 8 kilobyte size, 8 kilobyte page size, 250 is like what? It's like uh, 2 megabytes. Right? 2 megabytes of memory to sort a billion pages. How many rounds do you need? You need only four rounds. 
if your b is a medium, 10 to the power of 6. This probably is what? Probably two. Two rounds at most. You, you finish throwing that. In practice, would you multi thread the merging? Say again? In practice, would you multi thread the merging? Marty's thread the morning. Uh, with the iron as it is, no. Because you don't have additional memory pages to use. But I'm going to talk about uh, some variations where Marty threading might help. Okay. All right. Now let's optimize. Yeah. Question. Uh, let's, let's still have trouble understanding why is the b and the b minus one? Why is not all b minus one? Because in the first phase you load b pages, you store b pages. In the subsequent phases you merge b minus one rounds. Why don't we include the the merge in the first phase? Why don't you what? Include the the merge in the part well, effectively, you are merging, right? You take you read B pages, merge them, sort them. I think this is clear enough. If you still puzzled, we can take this off now. Okay. All right. Let's look at optimizing uh, optimizing the, the this algorithm. Okay. We you know it's pretty good already. And this is pretty much all the companies are using when they come to sorting. Okay, you can go to Google, Microsoft, Tableau, or whatever. Right? If they know what they're doing, this is what, they're, what, what they will be using. Or they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. And they will just use some third party library as a black box to do it for them. Okay? Why? Because if they were to use the min memory sorting, it will, not, it will not do the job. It will just never finish. The okay, IO button will kill them. Now, uh, optimizing this. So, so far, so far, our cost metric focused solely on, on I.O. cost. We never consider CPU cost. Right? We focus on minimizing I.O. cost. That might not be the case in practice, right? Especially when memory nowadays becomes so big. It worth, uh, it, it worth the effort to reduce the CPU cost as well when you have reduced I.O. cost. It's good to reduce both of them. That would be the best. So how do you reduce CPU cost? Well, this internal sort. I don't know. I will skip this. This one, this one is, is rather involved. I will not skip this uh, <coughs> for the class. I will skip this for today's lecture. I will come back to this on uh, Thursday's lecture. But with this algorithm, which I'm going to talk about on Thursday, this actually is not trivial to understand. It's not trivial to understand. You can view this as a black box for now, but what this algorithm does is improve the first phase to this. Okay. Instead of a round of B pages in pass zero, it's able to magically produce a round of two B pages. It's kind of like magic, right, if you think about it. Why? Because you only have B pages of main memory. How can you possibly sort two B pages with only B pages? <coughs> Do you agree? It's kind of like I tell you, you have two pages of data on disk, but you only have memory big enough to hold one page. Please sort that. How can that be possible? It's kind of like your brain can only remember one number, but I ask you to remember two numbers. Right? But somehow there's a way of doing that. So uh, we'll talk about this algorithm next Thursday. I'm oh, sorry, the coming Thursday. Uh, but you know, let's skip this for now and treat this as a black box. I will talk about other uh, optimizations that are simpler to understand, that are much simpler to understand. Uh, you clear I don't have a block IO and double buffer. So, I think either that both Daniel and uh, Victor have asked this question earlier about you know which one you read and whether that preserves locality and all that stuff, right? So let's take a closer look at this algorithm. What it does is it reads the first page of each one 
from P minus 1 bounds and start burning that in the memory. Follow me? When I finish pushing values from one page of a round, I will read the next page from the same round. However, by the time you do that, you are paying a random IO. Because what you're doing is this page, this page, this page, this page. Load these pages in. Suppose you are merging four rounds. You're moving the cursor, there's no IO whatsoever here. But when you finish this, you go to the second page of the first round, but by that time, the head of the disk is no longer there. This keeps spinning, right? You follow me? So you have to pay a random IO to load the next page of the same round. Every time you do this, you pay a random IO. Can you improve this? The answer is yes. Intuitively, instead of loading a page, a single page each time, load multiple pages. When you are at a run anyway, why not you load multiple pages, which are sequential IOs, and preserve them in main memory for future use? And when you do that, when you finish exhausting values from a page in a run, and when you do load the next page from the same run, that's not IO anymore. That's just a buffer rate from the main memory. You follow me? What's the trade off? There's no free launch. What's the trade off? Yes, the power of the log is not as high. Because you are using your memory pages to hold these pages you load in. You have to cache them. This will reduce by a factor of what? The factor of how many blocks, how many pages you read from each run. Let's say you read two pages for each run. Then this will be reduced by a factor of two. If you, read, if you read k pages from each one, this will reduce by a factor of k. Because you can merge a factor of k less number of bounds uh, when you do this. So that's called block IOs. Okay, next I'm going to talk about double buffering. To understand this, it's very simple. You all use the, I've never been to the women's room. Right, but I've been to the men's room all the time. <laughs> the men's room in this university and in all the other universities, if you go to the toilet, right, how many rows of toilet paper they have? Typically two, right? Typically two. Do you know why? Do you know why? It's double buffering. <laughs> <laughs> why? Because the reason is the janitor at the end of the day when he or she goes and clean the toilet, he or she needs to make a decision. The decision is, should I replace the roll of paper with a new roll? If you have a single roll over there, what happens? When you are almost out of paper, what do you do? Do you replace or not? If you do replace, you are wasting the papers. If you don't replace, what happens? Somebody tomorrow will <laughs> <laughs> we'll say hi to you. Let's put that one. <laughs> but with two rows, this problem is solved. You follow me? You can shuffle the rows around such that each toilet has two rows. That one row is le is low on paper, but the other row is is high on paper. Then I'm good. And why this is related to double buffering? The point is, you want to keep the CPU busy. You don't want CPU to wait for the data. In the toilet example, the person using the toilet is the CPU. And the roll of paper is your data. You want to make sure data is always available whenever CPU needs it. But the, the challenge is you don't know when CPU will need it. Right? People go to toilets sporadically throughout the day. Some people use more paper, some people use less paper. Same thing here. So what happens is, instead of load a single page from each run, if you think about the algorithm we're doing, I, I load one page from each run, after I finish moving through all this value from that page, what do I do? Important thing three times, right? Load the next page from the same run. But this takes time. This is this IO. 
while you are loading the next page from say run, can you move any of the cursors? You cannot. You cannot move any of the cursors. You have to wait for the next page of the data from same run to be loaded in memory before you can start moving the cursors around again. That's when CPU is idling. That's like the person is stuck in the toilet waiting for the paper to be, to be delivered. But if you read, how do you solve this problem? Very simple. You load two pages from each run. And when you finish one page of data, moving the cursor, you can move the cursor immediately to the next page in the same run, which is in your memory, by the way. And your memory bus, at this time, can go and fetch the next page from the same run, but your CPU is not blocked, because you do have the next page readily available for you. You have that second row of paper for you. So that's double buffering. And of course, again, there's no free lunch. But doing double buffering, what, what happens? Well, effectively, you reduce the number of rounds you can merge, because you no longer have B minus one pages for merging. You only have B minus one over two cursors you can maintain to do the merging. Okay? So that's block IO and double buffering. In practice, whether this, you know, if you look at the, the formula, Yes, compared to the baseline approach, the number will be bigger here. However, you are comparing against random I.O. versus some sequential I.O. and CPU idling with CPU busy all the time. So in practice, which one wins, it's hard to tell. You need to do some profiling on your architecture to figure out what's the best configuration to deliver the best performance. That said, there's only one topic left, which is that uh, to be uh, magic. Uh, I will talk about certainly. Without it, we'll stop. Okay.